What's going on everyone? Austin John Place here and today we're going to be talking about getting the national decks early in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. At the time of recording, December 7th, 2021, there is an article going on that's quoting myself and some data miners on Twitter and a whole bunch of articles have listed things like, you can unlock the national Pokedex as early as level one in Pokemon. I'm not going to make any comments about the inaccuracies of that statement, but you who is watching this video and may have played Pokemon more than the title screen, you, you may understand why there are some accuracies with that sentence. Continuing on, there was some fun digging around in the game's code to be like, hey, what happens if you complete the Pokedex before you do anything in the game? When Pokemon Home comes out, sounds like a very easy thing to do. In this game, as soon as you get access to a Pokemon Center, like five minutes into the game, you can start trading Pokemon between, you know, another game. And that was even in version 1.0 before any updates or anything else. Let's explore the option if you decided to transfer over every single Pokemon in the entire game to a brand new save, which you could trade at right now. You could buy two Nintendo Switches, two copies of the game, complete the living decks, trade every single Pokemon to a brand new game save and do that. And I thought, hey, Let's do that. So as you can see right here, I have zero badges. Just started playing the game, traded over Pokemon. Let's head back to the professor and talk with him. Hey, professor. Ah, Austin John, you've come to show me the progress on your Pokedex. Yes. Hmm. So you've seen 151 Pokemon. I see. You've met all the Pokemon there are in Sinnoh. That's it. That's all that happens. There's actually a flag that is required for you to obtain the National Pokedex, and that requires you to actually beat the first gym leader. So, give me some time, I'm gonna go beat the first gym leader now. And just to make my life a lot easier, I traded over my starter, I evolved him a little bit, he might know some better moves now, and I can beat these Bidoofs a little bit faster. Bye Bidoof. Do keep in mind, if you're not the original trainer of a Pokemon, it's not gonna obey you if it's too high of a level, so... Any Pokemon you want to transfer over and do this with, make sure that, you know, it's one that you caught and then you trade it over and you trade it up there and then you trade it back, because otherwise you're going to have a bad time. However, if you want to do a fun playthrough with a pretty unique team, remember that you can just, you know, trade over eggs. And when you trade over eggs, you hatch the egg and you're the OT, regardless of the species of Pokemon that's in there regardless of the IVs and everything else like that, so that's definitely an option. That's actually what I did with my first playthrough when I had all three of the starters. I just made sure that I had one egg and then I traded it over to the other game, so definitely an option. Yep, ding ding, perfect, thanks. Po coupon number two, let's go get that Poke Radar. Oh, hi Barry, you do, you sure you wanna do this battle? You you sure you wanna go against my Infernape? What's, what's your first Pokemon, is it a Starly? Oh no, I better look out for that Starly. Yay, <laughs> I got some rock smashes. Just gonna skip these trainers here. Hey Rourke, do you want a close combat to your Rampardos or Cranidos? Nope, no you don't, okay, and it's dead. And here's my first official Pokemon League gym badge, the Coal Badge. Nice. Barry, uh-huh. Thanks for telling me where to go. This is like my fourth? Fifth? Fifth time. Fifth time doing this. Perfect. Oh, I dodged these trainers before. Okay, back in Jubilife City. Let's go talk to the professor. You know, it is kind of nice going through here and every Pokemon, you know, because I've seen them all. It just tells me, hey, you've seen them all. You already know what's super effective, what's not. Oh, that's a very fast trip back to town. I didn't realize it was that fast. Okay, Professor, I have a gym badge. Where the heck is he? Where'd he go? Oh, I, he's he's in that town and I have to do the, the battle and then I have to get the ball capsules. By the way, because you're starting off the game and you have no money, you can't just transfer over every Pokemon and have everything because you would have to catch 150, 151 individual Pokemon and then, you know, have the full living decks. What I ended up doing is just catching, you know, two or three Pokemon and then just constantly trading the one slot over and over and over. And that's how you could do it without spending, you know, uh, how much are Pokeballs? 300 bucks? 300 times 151? Whatever that number is. I don't want to do that math. Professor Rowan, I helped you against these grunts. Now you're gonna go back to that lab? Oh, it's BB! Alright, he's here. Professor, 
Ah, lost to John. You come to show me your progress? Yep. Hmm. So you've seen 151 Pokemon. I see. You've met all the Pokemon there are in Sinnoh. What the heck, dude? Reading more into this, it turns out that we actually need to go to Eternus City. We don't have to do the gym battle there. I think we just need to go to the city. So, let's go through the forest and go to the city. We're now in Eternus City. I don't think we have to do anything here. So now I'm gonna run back and go find out. Yeah! Okay, great. That's, that's the requirement. You have to have one badge and make your way to Eternus City. You don't need to do anything in Eternus City. Just step foot in there, double back out. Been a very long time, I tell you, Sinnoh certainly is a long trip from Kanto, of course. So, yep, cool, uh-huh, great, thanks, Oak. All of the things. Change the camera angle, because, you know, we need to see those express expressionless faces. And now we have national mode for our Pokedex. Hey, look, Romanus Park is open. Maybe we should go to Romanus Park. It's not actually open. You do need to become champion in order to go to Romanus Park. And boom, there is the Poke Radar. As we can see, one badge, that's all you need. And you could trade over Pokemon for this, or when Pokemon Bank comes out, you could do it that way. And yes, if I go into any patch of grass and I use the Poke Radar, oh, the battery isn't charged enough. And boom, the Poke Radar works. Now, this does create a little bit of an issue here. The issue is, until you get the Versus Seeker, you don't really have unlimited money in the game yet. So the chance of you actually being able to shiny hunt Pokemon with this Poke Radar with one badge is very finite. As in like, it's not gonna be conventional for you to decide to transfer over everything from Pokemon Home and then you're just gonna shiny hunt everything in the game. Instead, some things that I think this would actually be useful for, if you wanted to do a playthrough that, what's it called, the shiny gym challenge where you have to have one shiny Pokemon before going to the next gym, this could be a much easier way of doing it instead of just going for the full odd shinies all the time. like some of my friends who are streaming are doing. And, oh, now that we have the national decks, that's actually flag six for the Grand Underground. So let's go to the Grand Underground and let's go look at the Pokemon down there. That's right, because we have the national decks, we uh, we have access to Rotom, as we know because Gardenia's over here. Hey there, Digging Master, Underground Man, let's go. Explorer kit, perfect. Now that we're in the Underground and I have the national decks, I don't know if that's required for certain items to be available while digging, but pfft, starting off the game and immediately running into a Dratini down here, uh, you have Crawdunt, you have Ladian, because the National Dex is unlocked, so we're finding National Dex Pokemon down here. Does that mean that I could go catch a Charmander right now and he's going to be, what, level 15 or 16? And Bulbasaur and Squirtle and Totodile and Chikorita and all of them? I think that's exactly what that means. So this does have some functionality that if you wanted to, you could transfer over your Pokemon from home into this game and then transfer them out, obviously. Unlock the national decks after the first badge. You could come to the underground and have this huge wide variety of Pokemon to interact with for more dynamic team building from a very early point in the game. And I think that's pretty cool. Unlocking the Poke Radar so that you could do chaining of shiny Pokemon. I mean, you're not gonna have, oh, there's our Squirtle. You're not gonna have a lot of options because, you know, you have a finite amount of money and the money you would need for Pokeballs and Repels in order for all that to be a thing. Pretty rough. Can we just quick ball this? I don't have any quick balls. I only have Pokeballs. That's right, okay, we just started the game. Oh, what level is it? Hide my, hide my face. Cause it's gonna break out. I know it's gonna break out. Is it not gonna? Okay, yeah, it broke out. Yeah, it's level 18. Because the level system only goes by your badge count. It doesn't go by the Pokemon that are able to spawn. The Pokemon that are able to spawn go by the national decks and getting certain HMs in the game. Yeah, I mean, while this would be, you know, hard to catch these Pokemon at this low of a level, it definitely is an option. Thanks to efforts by the data mining community, especially Matt and Anubis, we now know that you can obtain the gift Eevee from BB. Nice. Capture Rodom. We already saw Gardenia in the forest, although I don't have cut, so I couldn't cut through it yet. 
and you can capture the National Dex exclusive Pokemon in the Great Marsh, the Trophy Garden, and the Grand Underground, the starters amongst many others. Access to the location slash feature list below all require you to become champion and just having the National Dex isn't enough to access them, including the Snow Point Temple, the Send Off Spring slash Turn Back Cave for Giratina, Full Moon Island for Cresselia, the Battle Zone in the post-game, Romanus Park for all the previous legendaries, and the Swarm Encounters. So while doing it this early in the game is very tedious to trade over Pokemon one after another after another after another, in the future with Pokemon Home, which we could assume, assume, well we know for a fact it's coming in 2022. It's just a question if it's going to drop before or after Arceus. And if it's after Arceus, are they going to have support for Arceus at the same time? I think it's going to be two separate updates. We're going to have one before Arceus, probably second or third week of January. We might be getting home, you know, a week or two before Arceus comes out. Arceus, Arceus, I, I, need, to, I need to find, like, the official... I'm a YouTuber, so I should be saying this pronunciation. Which is why Arceus created a universe with three states of matter and 300 solid and liquid poisons that cause causes symptoms. Arceus? Look at that. I think once you head down and then you hit this intersection of 206 and 207, I think that's where you get the Versus Seeker, because you'll also have the bike at that point. So that means that you can actually start farming money, and after having the second badge, you do have unlimited funds. So that's pretty cool. Although you'd probably definitely want to make your way to Hard Home City and go to Amity Square. And in Amity Square, you could get the amulet coin item so you could get more money. Yeah, this is this is pretty cool. Are there totally awesome things that you think might be possible with the national decks this early in the game that I haven't even thought of? If so, leave a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.